Okay, today we're going to do a review of linear functions. Some of you may need this because it's been a year since you've done Algebra 1. Some of you may remember it and don't need it at all. We're going to begin with how to write the f equation of a function. And we have two forms that we can do that with. The first one we're going to talk about is slope-intercept form. It's also known as y-intercept form. Some teachers like to call it y-intercept form. And I've also heard of it being referred to as graphing form. While slope-intercept form is the technical, it doesn't really matter which form you call it by, so long as you know of y equals mx plus b. And the components that make it up is our m, which is the slope, and b, which is the y-intercept. Hence the name slope-intercept form. The next form we're going to take a look at is point-slope form. Point-slope form is written as y2 minus y1 equals m times x2 minus x1. m is the slope and x1, y1 is the given or known point. So I'm going to do a couple examples of these using graphical representations. Okay, here's a graph. It contains two points. Negative 1, 0. And 0, 3. Notice the point 0, 3 is the y-intercept. So I'm going to write the equation for this function. First, using slope-intercept form. And I use slope-intercept form because we have an intercept. And it's easy just to pull right off the graph, which is 0, 3. This is our y-intercept. The second thing we need to get is a slope. And remember, the slope is the change in the y divided by the change in the x. And so when we read a graph, we read it just like a book from left to right. So the first point we encounter is going to be the blue point. And so we're going to go from the blue point to the red point. And we're going to look for our change in y. So notice if we go from the blue point to the red point, we are moving up three units. That gives us a positive three. And then we're moving over one unit on the x direction, which gives us a slope of three. Now that we have the y-intercept and the slope, we can go ahead and write our equation. y equals, and then we get our m, which is our slope of 3, x, plus our y-intercept of 3. So our slope of 3 and our y-intercept of 3. In this graph, it's kind of difficult to see where the y-intercept is. So instead, I'm going to use point-slope. And remember, point-slope is y minus y equals m times x minus x. And I can pick either of the two points. We have two points here, the blue one and the red one. But I also need to get a slope. And if we remember, our slope is m equals the change in y over the change in x. Again, we're moving from the blue point to the red point because we read from the left. So we are going down 1, 2, 3 units. So it's negative 3 because we went down 3 units. And we're going over 1, 2, 3, 4 units, giving us the slope of negative 3 fourths. We write our coordinates of our two points. Our blue point is negative 3. 2, and our red point is positive 1, negative 1. Now we can use either of these two points to write the equation of the function. Let's start with the blue point. So we're going to say y 
minus 2 is equal to our slope, negative 3 fourths, times x minus, and actually, since it's minus a negative 3, we're going to say plus 3. That's because a minus of a negative 3 is a positive 3. So that is the equation of our function. Or we could use the red point and do the exact same thing. And we'll have y, again, minus, but instead of it being a minus, it's minus a negative 1, so it'll be a positive 1, equals our slope times x minus our x value in the red point of 1. Either of these two equations are correct, and if you would graph either of those, you would get the line shown in the graph. Now, let's look at writing the equation of a function from given information. If it has slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 5, I think it's a no-brainer here that we should use slope-intercept form. So we're going to have y equals mx plus b, and then we simply fill it in y equals, the m is our slope, which is 2, x plus the y-intercept is 5. So the 5 is our y-intercept, 2 is our slope. In the next example, they give us the slope of negative 3 and a point to negative 5. Once again, I think this is a no-brainer. Use point-slope form because you're given a point and a slope. So you get y minus y equals m times x minus x, and we simply fill these in. y minus a negative 5 is y plus 5 equals our slope, which is negative 3, and it's given, times x minus our x value of the point, which would be 2. Now we have the equation of the function. And if you had to write this in y equals mx plus b form, then you would simply multiply the negative 3 in and bring your 5 over. This would give you y equals negative 3x, and negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6 minus 5, so our final one would be y equals negative 3x plus 1. So this equation gives you the same function as equation here. Now let's say you were given two points. Most of the time you would use point slope form, okay, because you wouldn't have the y-intercept at your disposal. And so given two points, you could just as easily find the slope. So the slope is going to be m equals the change in y divided by the change in x, which would give you the change in y. Moving from y of 4 to y of 5 means you go up one point over, and then you get the change in x, the ch x value goes from positive 1 to negative 2. That means it moves 3 in the negative direction, giving us a slope of negative 1 third. Now we can use either of the two points to write our equation. y minus 4 equals negative 1 third x minus 1. That would be using the point 1, 4. Or... I could use y minus 5, that's our y value of the second point, equals negative 1 third, x minus a negative 2 for x plus 2. And just as a final reminder, parallel lines are going to have the same slope. In order to be parallel, the slopes have to be the same. Perpendicular lines, the ones that meet at a 90 degree angle, are going to have negative reciprocal slopes. So there's your review of linear functions. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them of me in class tomorrow.
See you then.